Salam and welcome to the Halftime Show on Pulse95 Radio with your boy Omar Duri live in the heart of Sharjah. Thank you very much for tuning in. And coming up on the show today, we've got Bobby Qureshi. He is the Director of Education for the College of Naturopathic Medicine. And it's the UK's largest trading provider for natural medicine. This week has had this theme of gut health, the immune system, so who better than to ask him, seeing that he's also bringing that to the UAE. Um, it's going to be super interesting because we're talking about gut health, the do's and don'ts. We're talking about simplifying health. We're talking about the importance of natural medicine. We're also going to be talking about him bringing that education to the UAE, which I'm super interested because nowadays being a health coach is something that is thrown around out there. But how do you become a proper health coach? That is is what we're discussing today on the only place to be at three, the Halftime Show on Pulse95 Radio. Salam and welcome to the Halftime Show on Pulse95 Radio. Shout out to everyone who is tuned in around the world, whether it's 95FM, Pulse95Radio.com, or even if you're watching us on YouTube, we have the best of the best and we're super grateful to have Bobby Kresh on the show. Bobby, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Omar. It's such a pleasure to meet you and a real pleasure to come on your show. Now, the pleasure's all mine, man. And you're, you've been up to a lot lately and I'm super excited to kind of pick your brain on so much stuff because I watch your content online. And one of the things, especially this week, it's had this real theme is gut health. Now, a lot of people get overwhelmed by that. Can you give us um, a brief on the do's and don'ts of gut health? Yeah, for sure. I think the gut is, a, is an incredibly misunderstood area in the body. And, um, you know, I'm actually doing a talk soon on gut health, the key to wellness, which really highlights the point that the gut is your key to being well and to living a healthy life. Um, there's so many interesting facts that always stem back to the gut. You know, 70% of our immune system lives in the gut, for example. Immediately, that tells us a really important link between immune health and gut health. But in terms of kind of the do's and the don'ts, um, I think in terms of thinking about what negatively impacts the gut, let's start with that side, because these are the things to be really aware of. Um, some of the key things I see in, in my clinic, definitely stress. Chronic stress is a big one. You know, we're all stressed individuals. Let's face it, modern society, we're all filled with stress. Acute bursts of stress versus ongoing chronic stress where the body doesn't have a chance to sort of recover. They're totally different things. And when we're talking about ongoing bursts of stress constantly through the day, every day, what that basically does is it shuts down your digestive system. Because when your body's in a, in a fight or flight mode, the last thing your body's interested in is helping you to break down that sweet potato you just had for lunch and helping you to absorb the nutrients from it. It's interested in helping you to run, helping you to move. So stress is a big one. And I always think as we, we talk about in sort of naturopathy, natural medicine, we always talk about finding the root cause. So stress is a really big one that often we come back to in something that we need to support. Another big one actually is medications and often unnecessary medications. Um, uh, there are many medications that are given often to support the gut, but sometimes they actually do the complete opposite. And one of the big culprits of this is a group of medications called PPIs, proton pump inhibitors. These are drugs like omeprazole, and many people know this name because many people have prescribed this drug. It's one of the most commonly prescribed drugs in the world, and it's used as an antacid. Now, people use this because they have reflux, they have heartburn symptoms, but what it does is it stops your stomach making acid. And of course, stomach acid has a hugely important role to fulfill, ranging from digestion, ranging from immunity, uh, all the way up to regulating the bacteria and the species that live in your gut. So it's always important to think about whether medications are truly necessary. Of course, there's always a time for conventional medications, but just thinking about, is it truly necessary? Is, is this the best route to addressing the root cause here? Also medications like anti-inflammatory drugs, like ibuprofen, these are big ones because what they do to the gut is they basically remove the mucus lining that protects that barrier. So by taking ibuprofen, it may seem like it's a harmless thing, but over time, if you keep using it, 
it can actually damage your gut wall, which can be a problem. So from my experience, ibuprofen is a drug that's used to reduce inflammation, but in the long run actually creates inflammation. See, that's super interesting because when you say that, a lot of people say, well, just take an ibuprofen and, and, and that should be all right. But you're actually saying it does more harm than it does more good. In the long run, it's definitely not a good thing for your overall health mm. because, you know, if you go to a doctor and they give you a, a, an anti-inflammatory drug, they'll also give you a drug that stops you making stomach acid, which is that PPI we just spoke about. The reason they give you the PPI is to counteract the side effects of the anti-inflammatory drug, which tells you enough about the fact that it can't be good for your gut. So again, there's a time and there's a place, although there are good research natural alternatives that are anti-inflammatory, by the way, but still we have to think, is it really the best way that we can treat this issue? Mm. Can I ask the other you, thing what, what, could we, what could we replace with that, a natural way rather than ibuprofen? Some of the best researched in terms of, you know, the strongest evidence will be things like turmeric, so curcuma, yes. Um, turmeric's a great one, um, and there's a good body of evidence explaining how it works. It actually works on very similar pathways to ibuprofen, so it's very well understood in terms of its mechanism. Um, so you do need to recognize that for turmeric to have the sort of level of potency as ibuprofen, you need a good amount of it. So, you know, half a teaspoon is probably not going to do that much scattered through the day. But if you have it maybe as capsules, plus adding it into your diet with a source of healthy fat to assist the absorption, with a bit of black pepper to assist the absorption, that's going to really do you some good. So turmeric's a good one. Ginger's another one. I mean, ginger is such a, a cheap, affordable way of getting anti-inflammatory herbs into your diet. So whether you grate some ginger and make a hot tea, whether you supplement ginger, whether you just incorporate it into your food, those are some good alternatives as well that you could use. Brilliant. And I was so happy you said that because uh, nowadays you can you can actually pick up curcumin or turmeric from the pharmacy and they've got the capsules as well if you don't have it in your nutrition or even supplement it every, every morning. And my mom will love the fact that you said that because she has it every morning. So <laughs> she'll be super happy that you said that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, it's a great one and, it, and it's it's also good for general inflammation you know you can use it for joint pains for arthritis uh, there's there's so many uses for something like turmeric uh, you know it even has anti-cancer properties so there's benefits there in terms of kind of supporting um you know cellular health as well so there's a lot of good evidence on the likes of turmeric love that all right we're going to take a quick break and when we get back we've got more from the man himself bobby Qureshi on the only place to be at three the halftime show on pulse 95 radio Salam and welcome back to the Halftime Show. Now, if you thought the first segment was good, we were just teasing you because it's going to get even better here on Pulse95 Radio. Bobby, I've got to pick your brain. Now, again, I could speak to you all day because even when we were talking in the first segment, I was nodding my head most of the time. So if you're watching on YouTube, you'd see me literally asking the question and then literally do this the whole session. <laughs> <laughs> um, simplifying health is one of the things that a lot of us um, struggle with because there's so much opinion and there's so much education and there's so much things behind you know what we do every single day but one of the things in terms of um, natural medicine that I really wanted to pick your brain about which is a topic that pops up every now and then online and it's um, mushrooms now in terms of using mushrooms the right way how do we do that so culinary mushrooms typical culinary mushrooms have some amazing benefits you know they they are uh, great great food options for us for many reasons ranging from supporting gut health to supporting immune health um, to supporting the gut microbiome there's lots of good things that they do we're now going into a time where our understanding of more medicinal mushrooms has just absolutely boomed and the again the, the the amount of research done in this in, in this industry now is amazing um, so we're talking about mushrooms here that have been shown to have really therapeutic effects on the body so if you were to just have a culinary mushroom like a button mushroom that's going to be good for you but that compared to something like lion's mane mushroom the therapeutic so the health benefits that you get from lion's mane is completely 
completely different to a butter mushroom. So if we give some good examples here, so certainly the most researched mushrooms, uh, if we talk about a couple of them, lion's mane is a great one. It's probably my overall favorite mushroom. It's named because if you look at it, it's a stunning mushroom and it looks literally like a lion's mane. So it, it, it's quite a remarkable um, mushroom. Um, this is an edible mushroom. It's a, it, it actually tastes a little bit like lobster if you've ever tried it before. Um, so it's a really tasty mushroom. But the reason it's got so much attention is because it's been shown to have some amazing effects in the brain. It has been shown to increase levels of something called nerve growth factor, which basically stimulates the, the development and the growth of new neurons or new nerves in your brain, which is quite amazing. And there is some research looking at the potential benefits of using the likes of lion's mane in conditions like multiple sclerosis, uh, dementia, you know, Alzheimer's disease even, uh, Parkinson's disease. Um, and I use it a lot in my clinic for those sorts of neurodegenerative diseases, so brain degenerating conditions. But also you can use lion's mane just for concentration. You know, I have people that come and see me who are students uh, and I recommend lion's mane just because it helps focus, for example. So it's a really good mushroom in terms of brain health, but it is also the mushroom of the gut brain axis. So it's very good for the brain, but it's also very good for the gut. So as well as helping brain function, it actually helps to seal up the gut barrier. So if you've ever got somebody that has something called leaky gut, where the gut sort of barrier is a little bit permeable, it's a really good one for that as well. So lion's mane's a great one. The other really amazing one is, that, that I tend to use very often is reishi mushroom. Um, reishi mushroom's an amazing one. It's referred to as the mushroom of eternal youth. So if you're looking for a, a sort of healthy, you know, anti-aging mushroom, this is your go-to. Um, it's amazing for the immune system. It balances the immune system out. So if you feel like you're constantly fighting infections and your immune system's a bit weak, then reishi mushroom can give your immune system a boost. But equally, what's amazing is that if your immune system is overactive, so you have something like an autoimmune condition where your immune system attacks the body itself, that can also help bring the immune system back to balance. So it's what we call immune modulating rather than immune stimulating, because it's not just stimulating the immune system, it's actually bringing it to some sense of balance. Mm. Um, Reishi does all sorts of other things, you know, it helps to support prostate health. So it's a great one for men that have an enlarged prostate. Um, it's good for cardiovascular health, so for heart health. Um, there's so many reasons it's useful, but those are probably the two most common ones that I would go for in my clinic, I would say. Excellent. And in terms of um, dosages, is there a certain amount of dosage, depending on the person's ability or activity that they should be taking? Yeah, this is a really hard one because some of them are culinary. So some of them you could just say, okay, have, you know, a certain quantity, you know, 200, 300 grams of mine's made or something. But then you also now get a lot of supplements, of course, that, that are mushrooms, that are reishi or lion's mane. Mm. And the difficulty here is that supplements tend to use different forms of the mushroom. So some use extracts of the mushroom, of the key compounds. Some use the sort of the whole mushroom. Some grow the mushroom in a certain way. So it's a, it's a quite a difficult one. So as a general rule of thumb, if you're going to have it as a supplement, which most people will, I would typically go with the packaging recommendations just because it's a more clear way of being safe with them i mean normally they're very 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 safe i mean it's it's they are very very safe um uh additions to somebody's life um and to be honest in some instances you would use them at very high potency so for example i work a lot with um, patients that are undergoing chemotherapy as a, with a cancer diagnosis and there's a lot of evidence out there to support the use of medicinal mushrooms to increase the efficacy of chemotherapy, but also to reduce side effects of chemotherapy. So it makes the treatment more targeted. So have a look online. This is this is what we call integrative oncology. So looking at how conventional and natural medicine can kind of work together and align. Um, and it might be worth having a little look at there if you're interested in, in that. It's a really interesting area with some amazing research. Love that, love that. All right, let's take a quick break and we'll be right back after this. It's 
Salam and welcome back to the halftime show. That was probably my favorite segment. That was really, really good and giving a good insight on just using things the right way, but also things that a lot of us sometimes are curious to try, but not sure what comes with it. So that was brilliant. Um, now we're going to dive into being a health coach. Well-being is something that a lot of people in the UAE and in charge especially are really looking into. They're looking to, to, to do more, to be more, to try and get at that optimal level so to speak we always use we always hear that word but what is it like being a um a health coach and especially regarding well-being rather than more fitness yeah i mean it, it it's just such a rewarding area to work in because as you said so many people are looking for answers and they're not getting the answers elsewhere you know people are being given uh, recommendations that are purely managing their symptoms and I see so many people that are frustrated because they want to understand why the why they feel the way they do, and they want solutions that that they can sort of take control of and do something actively and proactively in their life in terms of improving their health. Um, so a health coach is somebody really that helps somebody navigate their way towards a, a state of wellness. Um, you know, it's somebody that generally will be in fairly regular contact with somebody because let's face it, making dietary changes and changes in terms of movement and exercise is often quite difficult, uh, especially when people are very used to a particular way of living. It, it sometimes needs a lot of motivation and somebody also holding you accountable to change. So a health coach is somebody that will work with you to support you. You, you kind of co-create a plan with them if you like because ultimately it's you as the client it's it's your health and it's your body and you need to decide what your goals are so you work together you create goals health goals and then you work a way of sort of um working towards those goals so you create a coaching plan and that could be anything from diet lifestyle you know that could include movement that could include breathing that could include include stress management strategies that could include ice baths i mean it could include anything it's very much holistic and the way at cnm we very much promote this is that it should be holistic it shouldn't be just focused on food um and so we try and make it as as holistic as possible and the reality is omar that we are in a major crisis in the healthcare system both in the uae and globally um you know the the, the rates of chronic disease here are quite remarkable you know you're talking almost a 40 percent 40% of the population either being diabetic or pre-diabetic, wow. which is unbelievable. You know, we're talking 90% of the UAE population, if not more now, being deficient in vitamin D. You know, some of these statistics are worrying and, and quite shocking. Um, and that's one of the reasons actually that CNM, we decided to come here because there is an issue, a major issue with chronic disease. And basically almost all of it will come back to lifestyle. Genetics, of course, plays a role. Genetics will increase your susceptibility, but it's ultimately your lifestyle, it's your diet that really, really determines whether you're at a higher risk of heart disease, of diabetes, of all of these chronic illnesses that many people have just accepted, unfortunately, that is inevitable in their life to get. Mm, brilliant. So, because obviously you certify health coaches, what is it that they can expect when they come to your courses? So basically the, the course that we have is a five module course. Um, and the reason we've done it this way is because we feel like there are five key areas that you need to understand to be a successful health coach. The first is understanding how the body works, because of course you can't really understand how omega-3 in oily fish will help somebody if you don't understand how the body works. Um, equally, if you don't understand the symptoms and the causes of type two diabetes, you won't understand how somebody gets to that place. The next module is nutrition, the fundamentals of nutrition. So understanding what's a good and a bad diet, looking at the different types of you know, macronutrients like carbohydrates, protein, fats, micronutrients like vitamins, minerals, also different nutrients that you maybe haven't heard of before, like phytonutrients that you get in plant foods. Talk all about those. Then you do a module on fitness. So you understand how you can give somebody exercise recommendations to improve their health. And that's very much aligned with different areas that commonly come through. So, you know, if somebody's highly stressed and working six days a week, 12 hours a day, 
what would the recommendations look like for them versus somebody who's elderly with osteoporosis? So we kind of delve into these different areas of fitness. Then you do a module on coaching, which is where you pull everything together and you understand how you can actually coach people towards health improvements. And then the final module is business, understanding how you can set up a successful health coaching business, which of course is what everybody wants to do. And the course is uh, approved, and this is why it's taken about 18 months to get here. It is approved by the KHDA, by the Education Authority here, which is a big milestone because there is no other provider that has that approval. It's the first course of its kind being offered in person in, in the region, in fact. So it's, uh, it's a big milestone and we're really proud of it. Amazing. How long does the course take? And is it online? You said it's in person. Can you do it online as well? Or is it just in person? It's online and in person. So our first in-class intake is September. Um, our first online intake is July. Um, and it's basically 12 months. It's a year. And in person, it works out about one weekend a month that you'd be coming in for a lecture, for a class or for a clinic. If it's mm, a coaching brilliant. module. Brilliant. Love that. Love that. All right, let's take a quick break and we'll be right back with more on The Only Place to Be at 3, the halftime show on Pulse 95 Radio. Salam and welcome back to the halftime show. I, I am super, super uh, grateful that I had to get this man on the show because he's super busy and he's got so much he's doing and he made time for us here on Pulse 95 Radio. Bobby, it's been, it's been a great, great show so far, man. And I'm very, very grateful that you took the time to come out and see us. Well, thank you for inviting me. I mean, um, you know, a big part of our mission at CNM is to educate people. And so these sorts of platforms like the ones that, you, that you're pushing here, Omar, are so crucial in getting this sort of information out there, because I'm sure there are people listening who are frustrated, who are looking for ways to change their health, possibly even wanting to help other people improve their health as well. So thank you for giving me the platform to do it. It's my pleasure. How can we find out more about you, Bobby? So um, you can follow us on Instagram. So our handle there is CNM UAE. Uh, you can come to our website, which is www.cnm.ae. Um, you'll find all of the information that you need on there. Um, you can also uh, come along to our event. So we have various events. Of course, we've got a, a big event um, on, the, uh, on the 11th, Saturday the 11th, uh, which is our big launch. Um, but we're going to be hosting regular health talks, regular events. So come along to those. Uh, again, that's part of our initiative to, to sort of really spread this knowledge into the community. But that's probably the best way of getting in touch with us via those two means. OK, brilliant. And uh, I also got a couple of fire away questions that as soon as people knew that I was having you on the show, they sent in a couple of questions. So can we can we do that very quickly? Yeah, please go for it. Awesome. OK, uh, top tips to improve sleep. Good one. Um, so I think the first thing is make sure that your nighttime routine is good. Um, a lot of people get this wrong. You know, they're they're on their phone until two minutes before they go to bed. Uh, you know, their their rooms are completely bright again right before going to bed. They're highly stressed. They're not up. They're not winding down. You need to get your nervous system into a place where it's ready to sleep. So trying to avoid screen time as best as possible, or you could get blue light blocking glasses, perhaps to to help as well. Um, I think in an evening, you know, maybe having a, like an Epsom salt bath, maybe using 500 grams or even a kilogram of Epsom salts in a bath. That's a great way of getting magnesium into your body, helping you with sleep. Um, I also think making sure your room is pitch black. If there's light coming through in your through your windows and it, it even will go through your eyelids, that will tell your brain that it's daytime. So you're not going to get the signaling to release melatonin. Uh, and then other very simple things, magnesium, particularly magnesium glycinate as a supplement is a brilliant, brilliant way. You know, two, three, even 400 milligrams before bed would be very good. Um, and then you might want to use things like herbs, you know, um, maybe chamomile tea, maybe passion flower tea is a brilliant one. Um, so you can get some really good sleep teas. Uh, and actually one of our graduates um, who's a herbalist has set up a, a herbal dispensary where you can get these from, it's called Hikma. In, in Dubai. So you, they do some really good sleep teas because I know there's not much of this at the moment in Dubai. So just to give you a hand. So those are some key sleep tips, I would say, from my side. Awesome. And then um, morning routines. So first thing to do when you wake up in the morning. Yeah, good one. So I think ideally what, what we would do as early as possible in the morning is get some natural sunlight exposure. 
Um, I think that's a really good way of, again, getting your body into the, the circadian rhythm, which is your natural body clock. It tells your body, okay, it's morning, and it starts signaling to different parts of your body to tell you that it's ready to go. Because your body works on this basis of a biological clock. Mm. So different parts of your body signal. Um, and that's, for example, why in the morning we expect your thyroid hormones to be quite active because they get you ready for the day. But that's dependent on things like melatonin levels so it's like a sequence of dominoes um if you like mm. so um so yeah i would definitely say getting outside if you can just getting some sunlight exposure if you're on the ground floor you know and you can get outside and on some i guess here we're talking sand more than grass but ideally grass um you know getting getting grounded is a good way but um but yeah not missing breakfast i think for a lot of people is a good one um, even if you're intermittent fasting, uh, obviously make sure you're, you're still breaking your, your fast at, at a, with a decent meal um, so that you're not kind of impacting your blood sugar levels too much. Um, and not starting the day by opening your emails within two minutes getting up. And I have to say I'm sometimes guilty of this. But what that does is it immediately spikes your cortisol, which is your stress hormone. So it's not the best way to start the day for your body. It immediately puts you into a fight or flight mode. Mm, excellent, excellent. And um, you've obviously, you're obviously bringing this education to the UAE. And for those that want to uh, learn more or find out more, you gave out the website and you gave out the, the page for them to do so. But is there um, is there something else that they can um, stay in tuned with or be aware of that you're doing coming up soon? Yeah, so we so we've definitely got the we've got the big launch, um, which is our big sort of opening event with the likes of Dr. Malhotra coming along, who's one of the world's most renowned cardiologists. Um, very outspoken on things like statins, which of course is a really big area because it is certainly in the UK anyway we're talking the most commonly prescribed medication or group of medications here um so that's a really um a really interesting one and we've got various talks on the day i'll be doing one on gut health and the importance of gut health in terms of your overall wellness which we just started to scratch the surface on today um we're also going to be doing more and more events as we go so i think the best thing to do is to follow us probably on our social media on instagram um cnm uae uh, because we'll be posting all of our events. We're, we're already connecting with lots of other um, organizations who align with our philosophy here, who will be doing some um, some sort of collaborations with as well. So I think stay tuned there for what's to come over the coming months. Brilliant, brilliant. Oh, Bobby, thank you very much for coming on the show, man. I really enjoyed hosting you on the show. Well, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure, Omar, and keep up your super work. <laughs> Thank you very much. Remember, you can catch every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday, 3 to 4 UAE time. And you can see the man himself on our YouTube episode on Pulse95 Radio. Or if you prefer a podcast and you listen to it on the way to work, then check out Apple, Spotify, and SoundCloud. We'll see you guys soon. Take care. Assalamu alaikum.